And welcome into Heads or Tails. Bill Priestley here alongside Mr. Michael Rudolph. And uh, we're going to be talking about some industrial manufacturing in terms of how things are coming out right now. And unfortunately, not a great picture to be put forward here. So yeah, where are we going to go? I'd like to make a caveat first that, you know, the binary nature of this uh, format, and you can blame the person who made it, <clears throat> it kind of, you know, we, we simplify things into headwinds or tailwinds, right? Things are a lot more mixed, uh, and as we've seen over the past couple of weeks, you know, uh, I always give headwinds but, there's a caveat, or tailwinds but, there's a caveat. Um, what we're seeing now are still the beginning stages of a recovery. It's gonna be a long and slow and gradual recovery. So anything negative I have to say about manufacturers, I'll look over the next few months, it has to be taken into account. Things are getting better. Or at least they're not getting worse, right? And that's the most we can hope for right now. Yeah. Uh, if we pull up the first chart here, we have the uh, ESMI from New York. So this is a monthly survey of manufacturers. Um, and so this survey, you know, goes from negative to 100, uh, minus 100 to positive uh, 100. Uh, the baseline here is zero, right? This is the future outlook, right? This is six months out. How do they things? Uh, how do they think things will progress, right? And we've seen a lot of green, right? That is good. But the caveat here is this blue line, this is how things are currently, right? Anything below this dotted white line here means that things are contracting, right? So we see that things are going to get better, but it's always, you get this feeling from New York, right? Because they can't get any worse, right? You see this huge dip down here in May, and then to start 2023, we just had one in August as well. Things are getting better, right? In September, we uh, broke above um, into expansionary territory, but then in October, or September rather, right? We fell to minus 4.6. So things are contracting currently for New York, but hey, you know, the sunshine's around the corner. If we go over to the next chart here, we look at Philadelphia, right? The home of sunny weather, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, again, we see a lot more negative outlook, and it really started about, you know, a year and some change ago. Uh, a whole lot of red here looking at the future six months out, right? Again, this green line here are current conditions. You see I chose blue on the last side, not to confuse it with the green. We don't really have to worry about that here because there's so much red. And so things are kind of getting worse. Uh, we didn't see much of a change in terms of the future outlook or the current conditions outlook. Uh, both are in contraction. A lot of that has to do with um, heavy machinery, um, you know, uh, fabrication, right, uh, chemical plants. They're just not doing so hot. Go ahead. So if, so if we look at, obviously, you see the bump that goes above zero here, and we saw the same thing happen on the last chart there as well. Was that basically a misnomer as far as this is concerned? I think that was a, a, a false promise. I'd have to go in and see what they said. But there was like a, a, a kind of a seasonal reason. Like it was a brief, uh, I think, misread by the manufacturers. Again, this is a survey, right? So this is based on the, the, the emotions of those surveyed, right? And then you can have something where you rally in a month and say things are going to get brighter, and then say, well, maybe that was a false promise in the next month. So when you see these sustained trends, I think that's generally what you want to look for. But even, you know, if we look at this brief uh, foray into the green territory here, that just means that it was contracting over the previous month, right? This is all relative to the month that came before. So things were really bad, you know, in uh, July. But then, you know, in August, they weren't as bad as July. They got a little bit better. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's what we're looking for in Philadelphia. Um, and then lastly, we have the uh, Dallas Fed survey down in Texas, they are a negative bunch, I'll tell you that. And they also <laughs> publish comments uh, along with the survey. But first we see that both the current, the blue line, the current uh, index and the future index, the red, uh, are both in pretty steep contraction. They've been trending well below their uh, series averages here. So we've just seen a lot of you know discontent a lot of that is, I think, uh, due to what's happening in, uh, you know, they're discontent with the current administration, right? Trade policies. China, they're saying, is a lot weaker than expected. We've seen that for uh, months. You know, I think that was kind of a false promise that we had at the uh, beginning of the year. But China is not exporting a bunch. There's been a summertime lull that they're still kind of trying to recover from. Wage pressures are still increasing. We had to see a mid-year raise a lot, uh, among a lot of manufacturers there. So it's just not, and then of course, not to mention, you know, the interest rate environment hasn't gotten any looser, right? So it's just kind of curbing the appetite for manufacturers, right? They don't really want to, you know, go all in when things are so uncertain. Right. If we go to the last chart here, we see the ISM uh, monthly survey. Again, this is a kind of sentiment-based index, right? 50 is the baseline right here. Um, 
And we see that any you know, reading, again, above 50 is uh, expansion. Any reading below is a contraction. This is the mixed bag that we're talking about. These are the headwinds butt or tailwinds butt we're seeing. So this main white line right here are the new orders, right? Of course, you saw all that renegade success almost to you know, 65, 70 uh, back in 2020, 2021. Things have dipped. Things have declined, right? And even if you look at the most recent index, right, we're at 49.2. We're under 50. But things have improved, so we're contracting at a slower rate than before. We look at production, this green line here, that's finally above you know, break-even territory uh, this month. So production is increasing. This is really the key for freight markets. I think generally you look at retail, you look at the industrial sector, this purple, pink, fuchsia, magenta line, I don't know how to read colors, <laughs> this is the customer's inventory of the manufacturers, right? It's 47.1%. This is the time when any reading below 50 is really, really positive, right? And we saw that it dipped in the most recent index because as customers want to decrease their inventory, right, that means they need to replenish it, demand being equal, right? So we saw that, you know, their customers were saddled with all this inventory over the past year. They did a great work of destocking it. It took a while, but they were disciplined. They did it. Finally, the inventories are decreasing. Now, does this mean that they're going to look and reinvest in all the, uh, the, the, their uh, products that they can? Not necessarily, because we look at the backlog of orders here in this blue line, right? And that is pretty steeply in contraction. So we're seeing a kind of broader shift, and I, like I said, this applies to retailers as well. We're seeing a broader shift from that kind of just-in-case, you know, dragon on the, the treasure, just hoarding all the inventory in case that, you know, uh, consumer demand really picks up out of nowhere, as it did a couple of years ago, to this kind of just-in-time um, strategy, strategy of inventory management. And the reason they're comfortable with doing that is because capacity is so abundant, right? Only when capacity starts to really bleed out of the market in a noticeable way, right, and we're kind of still in that phase, uh, will you know, uh, manufacturers and their customers start to play it safe and say, look, I'm not assured that I can get what I need, where I need it, when I need it, I might as well just hang on to some of this stuff just in case. So, and this white line has basically also come on mimicked what we've seen in trucking and tender rejections as well. Obviously, massive heights during the pandemic has dipped, but is still it is recovering slowly at this particular point in time. As right, well. and I mean, if we look at you know five years, ten years into the future, of course, these sentiment indices aren't that you know kind of long term, but we should see a lot of manufacturing come back to the U.S., back to Mexico over the next five to 10 years. That, I mean, whether it goes to the U.S. or Mexico, I think will be a boon for freight markets in general, right? It goes across the border. Sometimes it moves over rail, but really kind of moves over a truck, right? Uh, this, I think, you know, is just kind of the decoupling, the divorce of China that we've been seeing. They're, they're unstable, they're unpredictable. Um, they can close at a moment's notice. You're basically subject to the government's whims over there. And then, not to mention, ocean markets are just highly consolidated, so you're subject to their whims uh, additionally. And then everybody gathers at the ports. I mean, we just saw a massive headache. This is really, you know, we're going to see a lot of positivity, I think, in the years to come. So we saw kind of a apocalyptic situation in the first three charts. This one gives us a little bit of positive notion. In other words, they say that the that, that white line coming back up at least a little bit. Where are we at headwinds, tailwinds? So we're looking at headwinds because we're still seeing a lot of contract, uh, contraction, especially in the sentiment indices. But we are seeing improvements, right? Even this new orders index contracting at a slower rate. So it's a headwinds, but you know, there's always the caveat. Right, this is a little bit of uh, perhaps positive thinking there as well at the end of this. So who knows how this is going to play out over the course of the next six months or so. Michael, thanks so much for joining us here on Hedge of Tales. We'll take a short break. Come back with lots more content here on Freightwaves Now.